All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego here in the States. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Sydney, Australia by Pix Jonathan. How are you doing, Pix? I'm fantastic. Thanks, John. And thank you so much for the opportunity to be interviews, interviewed and hello to the audience. Yeah, no, listen, I'm fantastic. I'm delighted you could make it. Uh, Pix is an international best-selling author uh, and a mindset and resilience coach and a healthy living mentor. And what we wanted to do is talk today about a subject that is still, it's still taboo in many ways. Mm. It's still mm. one that people kind of shy away from having the conversation on, and that is mental health. But it's something that at least if there's one part of the the COVID thing that maybe it shone a light on, on this dark corner of of uh, that has maybe been ignored or people have been afraid to talk about but you know mental health uh, is a real issue it's it's we're going to see obviously a lot of ramifications you know from mm -hmm. the current lockdown but tell me let's just start at the at the basics here Pix. why is it that even today like 2020 mental health is still not an issue that people feel very comfortable talking about oh i think because you can't see a bandage john it's yeah. not something physical um <clears throat> and it's kind of the unseen thing but it still has certainly the stigma around mental health and and then there's obviously different ramifications of mental health and i will share with your listeners and yourself that today is actually the 36th birthday what would have been of my late nephew who did die by suicide so it's extremely important that we normalize the conversations around the topics of suicide mental health depression bipolar um, and I'm all about that and thank you for this opportunity I really appreciate it because my upcoming podcast the courage preneur is exactly that it's about normalizing the conversations around the tough topics so mental health it's people have that their own stigma and you know as I said um, I don't think schools educate people enough mm -hmm. and teach them enough about coping and resilience and you know that courage having that mechanism to fall down seven times get up eight and mm -hmm. and yeah just the more if I can say that we open the conversations around this the better it is I do think the tide is very very slowly turning mm -hmm. um, suicide is a huge impact it's the biggest killer of people 15 to 45 mm -hmm. and only this morning I found out a beautiful friend he lost his sister by suicide so yeah, we just have to destigmatize the conversations around it. And I think there's two parts to that too, obviously, as well, is there is that the person themselves feels comfortable enough to have that conversation, but mm. it's also that the people around them are comfortable enough to have to have somebody have that conversation with them. So yes. it's two sides, yes. right? Because let's face it you know people we get very uncomfortable when people start talking about you know mental health issues mm. and and certainly yeah. um if anybody in the audience like has suffered from you know depression or any of these issues or whatever um part of the reason why you don't like talking about them is because you're just not sure how people are going to react exactly and that's another part our society doesn't educate us on how to cope mm -hmm. around not only the conversations but if somebody opens up about mental health and it's it's yeah, I believe that we need to educate ourselves and, and COVID, whilst it's been tragic, and I mm -hmm. we spoke about this before we went live, John, it's actually opened up what's important to me. It's not mm -hmm. the material side of things. It's the mental, the spiritual, the emotional things. It's the connections. It's the memories creating. And I actually have this absolute disdain and detest for social distancing. It's just typifying the mental health issues it's physical distancing people should not be socially distanced mm -hmm. um here we are you're in san diego i'm yeah. in sydney australia whilst we're physically distant we're not socially distant so media has perpetuated that and just our conversations so we have to be really mindful of the language the verbiage we use and you know just changing it from social to physical distancing absolutely changes it so being mindful of our conversation and and educating people in COVID, I've done mental health courses. So mm -hmm. I encourage people who are even struggling 
to do some personal development and self-education courses. Um, how do you how do you advise people? Because I think here's another thing, right? Is people are very scared to maybe admit that there may be something going on that they can't deal with. So they tend to try and push it down or ignore it. I mean, what's your advice to people if they're even starting to feel like, you know, maybe, maybe they're maybe they're a little gloomier than they normally would be. Maybe they're a little less optimistic about their life maybe there are these telltale signs that are maybe showing that there's something going on um people might be scared to admit that there's something going on yeah 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 so um, when when people start to have some of these maybe some of these feelings or maybe they're starting to think that you know things aren't aren't uh aren't as good as they could be kind of mentally how, how do you advise them to start um, the process of maybe figuring out what's going on reaching out and how to do that because yeah. i think that's a difficult part <clears throat> Really good question, John. And I say when you can't go outside, you go inside. Go inside to yourself. And I'm fairly new to the practice of meditation. Mm -hmm. And I'm privileged to be a beach crew leader here in DY in Sydney, the northern beaches. And I'm with spiritual people who are yogis and, you know, healers and that. I'm not. I'm the more corporate executive type person. So really just go inside. Start with meditation. And if people are saying, well, I don't know what to do. I just encourage you to take three deep breaths. Mm -hmm. It's all about the breath. And someone, I'm reading a book, and they said the only thing that stays with you, wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever you're doing, is your breath. Mm -hmm. And so it's something we live with. And so understanding more about the breath, um, me personally, I'm an avid learner. So I'm learning about the neuroplasticity of the brain, which can be above people's heads, but basically just being present in the moment um, and reach out. There's so much co amazing content online that is all free. I've done a podcasting course for free. I've done two mental mm -hmm. health courses for free. So there's no excuses. Most people have more time now. Um, and granted, if you're a healthcare worker or a, a you know first responder, you will be incredibly busy. That also typifies that they need to take yeah. time out. So just putting the oxygen mask, and I mean that metaphorically sure. in these timely situations, put that oxygen mask on yourself first. Because for me, I thought to give, 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 but I've got my fears here. If that's not full, I can't pour from it. So same mm -hmm. as us, you have to top up your own tank first. And if you're not topping up your own tank, you're actually being selfish because you're not giving yourself the best to others. So being self full is the best mm -hmm. way. And it's funny because uh, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that about selfish um, because I do think people, some people avoid having these conversations or even with themselves avoid confronting it because they feel like they're being self-indulgent or you know, mm. what's wrong with me? Come on, snap out of it. Or, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Or thinking, and if I start talking to people about how I feel, they'll be like, oh, come on, like get a grip or whatever. Yeah. So I think your point about that it's the opposite. It's not selfish and self-indulgent. It's actually the opposite. You're being selfish yeah. by not by not confronting That's and dealing exactly with right. the issue. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing too, John, it's nice to be asked for help. Like it mm -hmm. takes courage for a person to ask for help. I get that. But the person that you're asking, they feel valued that you've actually reached out to them and asked them for help. And I will say trigger alert here through all my suicide um, training, I thought to ask someone if they actually were suicidal was the wrong thing to ask. It's not. Mm -hmm. You actually then allow them to open up the conversation and say, well, yes, I am. And so if you feel that someone, a friend or colleague or business partner, whatever, may be feeling like that, it is completely fine to ask them. And on the reverse, if you are suffering from depression, it is completely fine to ask for help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think an important part of this too is, uh, is to not to give up either because sometimes, yeah. and I know this through, through somebody I know that, you know, had some serious issues sometime back. It's, mm. it's going to take, it may take you time to find the right person to help you. Yeah. So like, yeah. you know, say you decide to go to a psychiatrist or something, 
the first psychiatrist you go to may not be the right one for you. The second one may not be the right one for you. You may have to go through 10 different ones before you find the right one for yourself, but the key is to not give up. Absolutely, and I will share with your listeners too, Don. I mean, I'm positive and dynamic and energetic and everything, but COVID hit me. I'm a statistic of COVID. I lost my full-time job. And that was like, wow, it affected my self-worth, affected my self-esteem, affected my income. And then I put myself in their shoes, the owners, by thinking they've got seven stores with 20, 30 odd staff and 20, 30 odd families. How are they feeling? I'm simply mm -hmm. one person who can get replacement income. And so mm -hmm. whilst it was important to me, I, I compared myself to them and I thought, what can I do to change this situation? So I had to work on myself. And as I said, you just got to get back to yourself, reach out for help. And one psychiatrist, as you said, may not work for somebody. There's different modalities. There's different methodologies. It might be yeah. like getting back to nature, going for a walk. So find what works for you. Um, I will instill that exercise is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with you about exercise. And I think the yeah. other part there is to find, as you said, to find what works for you. And I think this is another issue that people have, especially if they're adults and they have a lot of responsibilities, you know, to start to think, I can't mm. take time for myself because I have yeah. all these other obligations. And I think when, when somebody is starting to, to have issues or whatever, or anyway, even if they're not, you have to take time for yourself you have to take time to replenish yeah. yourself to figure out what's going well, it's on it's a bit like when you're traveling <coughs> excuse me in a car john it's like mm -hmm. gosh you want to get from a to b oh i don't have time to fill up with fuel well guess yeah. what you're going to run out of fuel so you have yeah. to take time and servicing your car so you, you service your your car you service your laptop you have to service your body as well and that's you know spiritually emotionally and mentally as well mm -hmm. as physically and I think the other point that you made there is that there are so many resources available to you today mm -hmm. and there are so many different ways of approaching, yes. you know, treating whatever mental issue that you have is that you have such a, a wide array of options today that once upon a time you wouldn't have had. Oh, exactly. And people learn differently. Well, there's auditory, there's kinesthetic, so that some may love reading may love um you know listening like podcasts are great sound clouds audio books whatever it is um and others learn by doing so doing courses and things so find what what style you prefer and what is your best learning style and just you know reach out and so how do we um and then how do we just help people i mean again it's like both people who are suffering and people who are around them is start to look at mental health as you said in the same way that they would look at if you came home and said i have some kind of virus or i have this or whatever mm -hmm. everybody's under oh this terrible we'll get you through it blah blah, blah. somebody yeah. comes uh, well i'm having mental issues or like ooh, okay um and you yourself i mean you're going okay ooh, i don't know whether i want to say this. so how do we get people to sort of see that mental health is just another it's like physical health it's just another dimension well doing exactly what we're doing talking about mm -hmm. it um opening up the conversations um, and, you know, just if they want to know more, reach out to mental health practitioners or mm -hmm. organisations, companies within um, their own circle of influence in their own geographic area, if they can physically visit them. So just opening up, as we said, those conversations and getting that happening. And yeah, it's like my podcast is going to be talking about abortion sexual abuse all those really tough conversations bankruptcy mm -hmm. divorce depression everything like that and as i said the more we do talk about it business leaders such as yourself john you know your vibe attracts your tribe some mm -hmm. people will absolutely shy away they're going whoa i am not ready for this that is way too out there but i do believe literally your vibe attracts your tribe and the people that need to hear you and your resources and your methodology, they will be attracted. So, you know, you've got your extroverts, you've got your introverts. So just for people to build their courage muscle. And I've got a free seven day courage blitz that I take people through just to start developing their courage muscle because um, it's that unseen muscle that we, we do need to have. So so just working on themselves and, and just, um, I would like to say just starting small uh, you know, simply like by three deep breaths and 
or maybe going to the library, finding a book, just doing one thing. And that's what I would encourage your listeners to do today is to do one thing to help them for their physical and mental health. Yeah. Whatever that is, if it's getting off social media an hour earlier, that is huge. And just mm -hmm. be so grateful. You should almost be grateful for the fact that you woke up in the morning, right? That you and that you were in a bed, you're in a nice bed, and yep. maybe you're in a nice yep. house. There's so many things <clears throat> that they all seem it all seems very, very simplistic. But at the same time, if you start to look at things of gratitude, it takes you out of, you know, constantly, you know, looking at the world and saying, I don't have it enough does. or I'm not doing well enough or anything exactly. like this. Yeah. And your point about doing something, if maybe for five, 10 minutes a day or whatever, you said, okay, I'm going to go for a walk around the block or whatever, and I'll even leave my mm -hmm. phone at home and I'm actually going to look at the trees. I don't know, whatever yeah. it is, but just yeah. take yourself out of the moment. Yeah, or if you're more creative, um, you know, I find writing very cathartic. Mm -hmm. But each night before I go to bed, I've got a little gold book of gratitude that I write down five things that I'm grateful for. And it simply is that I had a chat with John, that I, the sky is blue. It's not those earth shattering like, oh, I made yeah. a million dollars, you know, it's yeah, nothing yeah. like that. And that's what COVID has really amplified for me. It's what is important. It's the intangibles, those free things that are absolutely priceless. Yeah. So being grateful, it does absolutely change the, the, the wiring of the brain. And that's, again, I've always said thanks, but absolutely intentional gratitude is so different. Yeah. And, and on top of that, too, I think is that you deserve to be happy. You deserve to be happy. Uh, it is and a birthright, yes, yes. It is a birthright. And therefore, if things, if you don't think things are going your way right now, you have a right to want to change them. You have a right to want to overcome yeah. it. And you have a right. And as you say, you shouldn't be afraid to, to ask for help. Because I do think yeah. sometimes people think, well, they don't feel like they, they don't feel like they have the right to be happy. They kind of feel like, well, yeah. this, is the, this mm -hmm. is the lot that was given to me. Uh, that, that's a good point because... Um, Someone once said about me, oh, she likes money. It's like, well, mm -hmm. we do live in a capitalist society. <laughs> yeah, We're in a yeah. consumeristic society. You go to the local supermarket, walk out without paying and see what they say. And you can't buy it with love, kindness, you know, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah. So I've kind of shied away from, I guess, stepping into my own inner brilliance. And I say this with mm -hmm. no ar arrogance. It's sure. simply not to impress, but to impress upon people, for them to own their own authenticity. Mm -hmm. be themselves and that's where i've really come of age in COVID. like i will talk about tough conversations i will yeah. talk about not the details of my own abuse because that's kind of clouded and a, a vast history um but talking about those conversations and just stepping into who i am and owning yeah. that and then i'm so grateful and i will say something maybe a little bit more not controversial but thought-provoking happiness is a decision Oh, it's okay for you, you're positive. Yeah. I choose to be happy each and every day. My life is far from perfect. Yeah, I know, I, I, I do. I totally agree with that. I think we have choices, you know, that we have to always look at what are the things that are within our control and what are the things that are without our control, right? So we can't, yeah. so right now, you know, you're in Australia, you know, you can't, if you're down in Melbourne, right, you're in a Sydney, but if you're down in Melbourne, there's nothing you can do about the government lockdown, right? They exactly, don't, you can't yeah. overcome it. But how you react to it and what you use your time for is That's entirely right. up to you. And as you said, um, and it's the same thing every day, is that, yeah, even if your situation is tough, you can say, okay, I can, I can have a good attitude. I can yeah. be happy with what I have. And I can use that energy to propel me forward rather than yeah, to make me yeah. stay where I, I am. I love that energy. You can have top, you know, positive or negative energy. Mm -hmm. You can't have a positive and a negative thought at the same time. I'm human, right. I get negative thoughts. I aim to yeah. flush them and replace them with the positive. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so listen, Pix, this has been fantastic. I'm so glad we got to talk today and, and I really look forward to your podcast. I think it's, uh, it's, it's, very much, it's very much needed. And to anybody who was listening today, both uh, if you're somebody who has struggled with mental health or feel like, you know, things just aren't right you know you're or you're you know you there's, there's something weighing heavily on you please please reach out and and talk yeah, to somebody definitely. yeah and for those and for those who surround you um if somebody does open up to you about mental health please be open and and grateful that they actually opened up to you because it's such a yeah. tough thing for people to do and we've got yeah. to change that we have to change yeah. that yeah yeah 
Yeah. And I just want to instill in everybody that you are amazing, you are loved and you are valued and sending big, 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 huge Aussie virtual hugs from Sydney. <laughs> Excellent, Sydney, one of my favourite places. So, <laughs> I hope to. I hope someday, when everything settles down, to get back down to Sydney again. Absolutely, yeah, definitely yeah. catch up. Yeah, we will. We'll have a. We should have an adult beverage somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> an adult beverage, I love that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know you. All right, listen. Thanks again, Picks, and thanks everyone for joining us. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeline CRM. I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.